In this week's episode, I catch up with Simon Finnegan following the end of the season and look ahead to 2022. Hello and welcome to the Witness Rugby Chat podcast with me, James Gordon. It's episode 53. There's been a bit of a delay between the last couple of episodes. Apologise for that. We'll try and ramp that up over the off-season just to keep people interested and give you something to look out for. Um, In this episode, there'll be a long interview with Simon Finnegan, who I caught up with earlier this week, just to discuss the 2021 season and also look ahead to... 2022 and how recruitment is shaping up and also the expectations for the 2022 season before we get going thanks as always to the podcast sponsors pd law solicitors and the gorse financial management parklands fc and whistle so witness disappointing campaign it has to be said finished eighth in the table in the end uh, and since the end of the season which finished with three straight wins They've been busy on the recruitment front. At the time of recording this, um, I've run through the squad. I'm sure everyone listening will have picked up on all this. But so far, new deals have been confirmed or re- retained players are Danny Craven, who signed until 2023, Kenny Baker and Oliver Brooks, both signed for 2022, Owen Farmworth and Adam Lawton, both committed to 2023, Shane Grady to 2022, Joe Lyons is another who's now committed till the end of 2023. And then Steve Tyner and Matty Smith both committed for the 2022 season. Jack Owens had signed a deal earlier in the season, committing him to 2024. Jake Spedding and Logan Tompkins are both still on contract for 2022. So the full list of retainees is Craven, Baker, Brooks, Farmworth, Grady, Lawton, Lyons, Owens, Tyra, Smith, Spedding and Tompkins. And then so far in terms of new signings, Witness have brought in... The majority of them on just one year deal. Sam Wilde came in on a two year deal. That was announced at the Members Monday event uh, back in August. He has come in from Newcastle. He is on contract for two years. But all the other signings so far on one year deals. There's four from Oldham uh, Liam Bent, a back rower, Tyler Dupree, a prop, Deck Gregory, uh, a hooker or a halfback, and Ryan Ince, former witness, of course. He's returning to the club on the wing. Uh, Levy and Zongu arrives from Bradford, he's a prop, and Matty Fozard, who's a witness lad, he comes in from London Broncos, he will be probably first choice at hooker by the sounds of things, and I have a bit of a chat about him with Finnegan in the interview that's coming up, and then Matty Fleming completes that list, he comes in from Jews, but he's a, an outside back who was formerly at the St Helens Academy. Um, players who've confirmed their exit, Paul Clough and Matt Cook, have, of course, retired. Dion Cross is leaving. He's on his way to Salford, we believe. Jaden Hatton uh, is a probably a surprise exit from... a surprise departure from Witness. It was believed that he wanted a full-time deal and he's going elsewhere for that. He, again, I asked Simon Finnegan about him in the interview, which you'll hear shortly. Daniel Hill, uh, the young fullback who played a handful of games for Witness this season, he has gone to St Helens uh, and other players... Out the exit door, Owen Buckley, Josh Wilde and Lee Jewett, who only played 20 minutes for Witness all season, um, having signed under Tim Sheens this time last year. So, if my records are right, there's just five players we're waiting for confirmation. Joe Edge, Lewis Els, Lewis Hume, Lloyd Roby and Will Talik. Will Talik is definitely staying because Simon Finnegan mentioned him in the interview. So, we'll go straight into that. I'll catch up with Simon Finnegan right now just to talk about everything from the season just gone. Um, I hope you enjoy it. Here it is. The stamp duty holiday is being extended on all properties until the end of June. So if you're thinking of moving house, make sure you instruct your local solicitors, PD Law, for all your conveyancing needs. So, Simon, first full season in in the job. How do you reflect on on how it's gone? Uh, Well, yeah, it wasn't... It was probably disappointing, I think, the overall picture of it particularly the the position we finished the league position wasn't wasn't good enough you know and and there's plenty of reasons why and things like that but yeah it was probably disappointment but yeah a little bit of frustration in there as well because I think at times there was we we got some things right and certainly at times we, we clearly didn't so yeah a little bit of disappointment and frustration but still enjoyed every minute of it you know it's in a, in a in a strange why I've, I've loved it. And like, well, I guess it, it probably didn't go anywhere like you, you thought it would um, 
you it would go. But but do you look back at anything particularly as a positive throughout the year? Oh, there, there's many. You know, there's where the club's at in terms of off the field and how it's run is still a positive. I think personally, my relationship with with off the field with, with Phil and the board is is really good. You know, it's 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 been fantastic from day one and it still is. So that, that there's some positives certainly, but there's plenty of little stories as well. You know, the, the, the young lads that have been exposed, not so much young, young, young lads as well, players that haven't played so much at this level have been exposed. And even some of the, the older lads at the championship level, what they've been exposed to this year is, is a positive because it's only going to benefit us moving forward. You know, we've been through some, really difficult times this season in different periods. And no matter if you're a Matty Smith at 34 or, you know, Will Talik, they're still going to learn from it because the championship's a different place. So you've got, to, you've got to get that experience. And, you know, unfortunately, we've probably experienced a lot of bad stuff this year in terms of the rugby side, but that's only going to help us moving forward because we're taking a lot of the group we've got now with us so that they will know what, awful looks like and, and they'll know what good looks like. So that's, you know, it's a lesson that we don't have to teach because they've experienced it, which is important for players. What was the high point or, or maybe your favourite point of the season? Is there a moment in the season that stands out to you? Oh, I'm not so, I, I don't know about favourites. I think the last few weeks in particular, uh, you know, some players have stood up and we've had a fair bit of adversity, you know, within the club as well. And, and things that have happened, but there's other stuff that have gone on as well, you know, and the overall picture that them things have, I've been really pleased with because at times we have struggled obviously with injuries and, and the way the squad was and things like that, but just certain individuals have stood up across the border and that's been really a positive. I couldn't nail one thing because there's been little moments along the way, you know, the Toulouse game jumps out as well. It, was a, it wasn't the best day, but, some young people in that game really stood up and, and that's that's been the, the across the board. I mean, Jack Olds is another one. It's really difficult to be captain of this club anyway. And and certainly in, in times where it's been difficult on the field, and he's, I think he's been tremendous throughout the year to, to do that as well. You know, I get a lot of criticism and rightly so, but it's also hard for the captain who's on the field and got to go through it. So I thought the way he's handled that has been impressive you know so there's plenty of good stories and and, and a lot of people have, have come have developed this year which is pleasing as well for a coach I suppose the the last home game the Bradford game I guess that was in some ways almost like the perfect way to to end the season you know you, you pinch a win at the death but just the manner of the win sort of lifts everyone up you know especially the fans yeah and no, that's important because we we haven't given much to cheer about you know they, they, they weren't with us at the start but we haven't given, and that, the games like that, the fans love more than anything, don't they? That they, they hate the ones that you lose on the buzzer, and obviously the blowout scores they don't like. But it is nice every now and then to win one right at the end because it, you know, the theatre of it all is brilliant for them. And, and I think we haven't given them enough of them. We didn't give them enough wins to make them happy all the time. But the, you know that that's a pleasing thing to give them that one at the end. And on the last home game, it helps against Bradford as well. It was just good to. Because it felt like a proper atmosphere. Same as the Swinton game away, I thought the support there was immense, you know. So them two lasting memories of the fans for the season are, are pleasing. You, you know, you mentioned a bit of the criticism and, and stuff that you've received, uh, you know, throughout the year. I suppose, one, do you take much notice of it? But, but two, was there ever a point in the year that maybe you considered that you weren't the right man for the job or that, that it might not work out for you? Oh, no, I'm not... I know I get criticised because that's that's part of the job, and and when you lose, you get criticised, and I'm a, I'm aware of it, but I don't read it because I'm not on social media and things like that. But I, I know it's there. Don't don't get me wrong. I'm not stupid either. If you don't win games, you you're going to get criticised, and and they're allowed to as well. I, you know that's I'm a fan in other sports, and I criticise and and think I know better and things like that. But I, I've never I'm I'm quite stubborn as well. You know I don't. I know I'm the right person for this job. So that's, I never doubt my ability. I've got wonderful staff around me. And like I said, the board and, and I and Phil, we get on really well. So, and we have really good, open, honest conversations with each other all the time. So we know 
where where I'm at, where I'm at, where the club's at, you know. So I don't, yeah, I don't I don't doubt my ability as a coach. It's been a disappointing year, and I take full responsibility for that. I'm the head coach here. I won't shirk away from any of that. It's it's up to me to get it right. But yeah, I'd, it doesn't. Some dark days, but I don't wake up on a Monday and think that I'm not the right person for the job. I think I'm the right person to fix it, and I've got to fix it. So. But like I say, I'm not the only one in this picture. I've got a brilliant assistant coach. He's been excellent this year, Ryan. So he he suffers as much as I do, you know. It's just he, and he's been great for me. You mentioned Phil, and I had a brief chat about him. He's obviously been in and around the bench quite a bit this season. I don't know whether it started because of the COVID protocol thing, but how do you find that dynamic? Because obviously there's people who think, oh, the CEO should be in the boardroom and stuff. But I know Phil likes to get his hands dirty and stuff. But how do you find that situation where he's almost around you on the bench? Oh, it's I'm comfortable with it. He's he started off doing it because you know our kit man Clark he wasn't at a game. So Phil, like most staff do here, you find a different role that isn't your own and you get on with it. And he he likes being around the boys as well, which I think it's it's important. You know, as long as the relationship is good between himself, the players, himself, the myself, Ryan, and the other staff, then there's no issue with it. You know, because he's. And plus, he gets a different view of it. He, he can see it on a match day and things like that. But I, I actually appreciate him being there because it's another set of eyes from a different point of view. And, and he's helping out as well. So it's good. You know, I, I think it's fantastic. It's And it probably keeps him involved in this side, which he should be, because he, we do a lot of stuff off the field together in terms of, you know, how we put the team together and, and, and how we plan and all these things. So it's only fair that he should be there on a match day as well. And... And, and, yeah, I don't have an issue with it. I think it's great. And, and of course, you, you know, you sort of alluded to it there. Phil was heavily involved in the pathway that's brought through so many of the, the players that have got to the stage. And even the players, you know, like Daniel Hill's obviously moving on. But players like him have come through a system that Phil put in place. And I suppose, you know, I guess the club's got ambition to, to get back to a stage where it can continue to bring players through. So you need to have everyone you can around you to be able to do that. Yeah, and, and again, he... Being in my position as head coach, I, 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 I'm not got the perfect relationship with everyone. I, you know, certain players feel more comfortable talking to Phil. Certain players feel more comfortable talking to my assistant Ryan. I was the same as a player. You, you, there's certain individuals that you'll 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 talk and have a better relationship with. That's just common, you know, knowledge. So, and him being there is that he's a lot of these players, not so much the younger ones that have come through, but some have been here a long time that he's he's seen come through and had a, a got a really important relationship with so you know and I, and I like that as well you see him in the change room before games and he'll be sat next to Jack Owens and they'll be having a laugh and things like that which is it's fantastic because he he's got a bigger relationship with some of these than I have you know so it's it is important and, and that's the way this club's what makes it so good as well you know we, we it doesn't matter who you are or what role you have you you still got a part to play and it's still important obviously you you took on the job I can't remember when it was, it was just before Christmas, was it last year, something like that. And and you obviously inherited pretty much the large amount of a team. I think you added Adam Lawton was probably the only one that came in after after you'd arrived. So I guess looking ahead to 2022, it must feel a bit different for you. I don't know whether it's seen as more of a positive that you're able to maybe have an influence in, in who the individuals in the squad are. Yeah, but that's, I mean, that's the case for pretty much every coach when you take over a team. It's You're always inheriting the team that's there and so you just adapt to that and there's no issue with that I think the hardest part of this season was the amount of injuries and COVID and things that struck and, and that that's what's hurt because we haven't had the right balance of the players on the field enough or, or the right balance to pick from so in terms of inherit, inheriting the squad that's that's not that's not a big thing but it, it, it myself Phil and Ryan and how we put this squad together for, for next season it, it has been really refreshing as well you know we've we, we started doing it very early we we knew how we wanted it to look we knew the players that we wanted it you know to make up that squad and and and, and to be honest I'm really happy with how it's went I, I, I couldn't you know we haven't missed many targets that we've gone for and we haven't missed re, you know reta retaining the ones that we wanted to retain as well so that's been a collective effort from everyone off the field and it that's been pleasing and obviously it's exciting because it's yeah like you say this this preseason and this will be a team that myself Phil and Ryan all three of us put together 
and, and yeah, that, that, that adds a new dimension, but it also adds a, a little bit more pressure, which is good as well. Obviously, you've still got a few signings and stuff to, to announce, but looking at, at the recruitment so far, clearly the, the market for props is a difficult one for all, for all clubs. Does that mean that maybe the likes of Kenny Baker and, and Shane Grady might be, be employed more in the front row next season, as they have done for quite a, quite a bit this season? Yeah, well, the way, I mean, all the middles now, apart from when we played Matty Smith, there's a, obviously a ball playing 13, 13, 8 and 10 are the same positions now. They're all middles. So it was an area that we, you know, we we needed to to fix and get right because it hasn't worked out for different reasons this year. And then that just, that happens. That's just the way the sport is. So it was an area we need to fix. And, and we have done that. And we've, we've added a little bit more strike around, the, you know, different areas as well particularly our back row and and just made it, a, I think, a more competitive squad across the board, you know, which, again, is important. Some of the lads that have come through this year had no championship experience or very, very little championship experience. So them lads that have had that have got 15, 20 games under their belt. So next year we'll, we'll have a squad probably where everyone at least has played at this level. So that's, again, that that's a healthy squad to have. Do you know how many you're hoping to run with squad wise? Not at the moment. It'll be probably 27, 28 around that around that mark, I would say. Uh, and of course, you mentioned one of the players you hadn't had any experience, Will Talik. I mean, he played the first game and then ended up playing every single game. I think it was only him and Dion Cross, I think, who played every single game. I mean, I guess you could have imagined when you first met Will that he would have been playing every single game. And how, how has he taken that on? Excellent. It's you know, it's a freakish effort. Uh, yeah, it's, I mean, if you, if Alex Wormsley did it, I'm not comparing the both here, but if he played every single Super League game, they'd be saying it's unreal. For for any middle player to play every single game is it, huge. So, yeah, I, I probably had him down to play two or three, but his application in pre-season put him in, in a position to play games, probably a handful at the start of the year, but then, circumstance change and and a lot of the games he made on merit so you know that that experience he's got this year you, I mean he's, you're talking two three years of experience that he's got in one season so I would I would imagine he's still got to come in pre-season and, and work hard because he's still a young kid that's the first and foremost thing you need to do but in terms of games experience he's miles ahead of a lot of a lot of young players at his age because some of the things he's been through this year, like I say, it's two, three seasons worth that he's got there. And he, he'll he'll be a much better player for that next year. How do you identify more players like him, obviously without the reserves and, and without the academy in place? Watching rugby, the amount of the amount of games myself, Ryan, our support staff watch it and, and what we see and how we play and what we what we know would add to us is is important because there's you know, we've signed some olden players and, and, you know, people will look at it and go, oh, well, they got relegated. So why are you signing people that got relegated? But, you know, there's plenty of good players playing at every team. you just got to look hard enough and, and you've got to know that they'll fit into your environment and, and how you want to play. So if, if we didn't look at players that, in relegated teams, you know, there'd be no players to look for. There's plenty of good players out there. So that, there's, there's loads of different ways we want to look and target and, and how we play is an important part of that. And, and what we're about as well. So most of our recruitment has been around that. There's always, every player we sign, there's a reason we sign them to fit into our group. And obviously you brought Lewis Hume in sort of quite late in the season and, and he had a decent impact. I mean, I don't know what the circumstances is around that, but in hindsight, do you, do you sort of wish you'd brought him in sooner than you did? Well, the reason we didn't do it sooner is because we had Brad, Brad as well. So, you know... The, at the time, we had no nines and then Brad become available and he was excellent for us in, in, the, in the, I think it was seven, eight game stint that he had for us. So, and then you obviously, you, you're looking around quickly to, to try and fix it. And at that time, you're thinking maybe one or two games, he comes back to us, but obviously it didn't work out that way. So then we, we go back and look, but he, I mean, he's been brilliant since he come in, Lewis. I think he's been fantastic. And, and, we're currently trying to keep him at the club. You know, we're, we're talking to him about that. And he, he was, in terms of where he come from and, and, and jumping in a season, and the games that he jumped into, you know, we forget that he jumped in. I think we were playing Featherstone, Bradford's, and he didn't jump in against 
no disrespect to West Wales and things like that, he jumped into a pretty hectic part of the season and you could argue that he was probably in our top five players in most games. So that's, yeah, in hindsight, it's a wonderful thing. I probably should have went there at the start, but I think that Brad threw us out a little bit because he was so good for us and, you know, we were hoping that we could keep him a bit longer, but it didn't always work that way. I mean, I guess, depending on what happens with Lewis, um, what are you thinking around nine? You know, do you see Fozard as a nine or do you see him more as a as a six or a seven? No, he'll be, he's signed as a nine. But, you know, we what we've learned from previous years and this year's, we need good cover across the board. You know, we can't, we can't rely on a will to leak every year and, you know, pulling people out of amateur. I think what we've, what we certainly learn as, as a club and, and myself included is we need to have cover and, and good cover, you know, that also not just cover, but it puts pressure on players that they have to perform at a certain level to stay in the team, which, you know, the back end of the year, we had that a little bit more Jake Spedding. I'll use an example, missed out a couple of games because Lloyd Roby come back and played really well, which I don't think we had that luxury all year. So that, you know, that it's not always about providing cover. It's about intensity of training and putting pressure on the people that are there. Uh, and Matty Smith, is he, is the 13, will he be number 13, do you think, next season? Or do you still think he's going to return to maybe play at Scrum Half? Uh, well, he's, he, he will, we're undecided where that will, how it will look, you know, that, the beauty of what you know that that experiment happened this year is is we know in certain games now that Matty Smith can play as a thirteen and it opens up our attack. Clearly, some games it, it didn't work, and, but we didn't have the luxury of changing it around. So, what we've certainly got this year, which I'm really pleased about, is that the ability of some players to move positions and and it not affect our team too much because of the players we brought in as well. I mean. We, we, we've got some other plays that haven't been announced that are going to add to that as well. So when they do, you'll, you'll, you'll start to see the picture that's unfolded. I suppose there'll be, a, there'll be no shine away from tackling for, for him now when he's playing at Scrum Half. He can't use that as an excuse anymore because he's proved that he can do it. Yeah, well, sometimes it's a little bit different when you're three in off, a, off an edge. and It's a one-on-one -on -one where you've got protection of middles around you and they run straight at you, which... I'm sure he will now understand as well. Like, yeah, you've got bigger men running at you, but you've also got big bodies around you protecting you. So, yeah, I'm, yeah. to be fair, he was brilliant. You know, I can't... It was a huge effort what he did this year. And there was a spell just before I took him out of the team where he was playing with a cracked sternum. So, you know, that's... <laughs> and, and even to the point where he didn't want to miss games, but it, it felt like a type of punishment putting him out there because he, was, he, he, he didn't want to miss games. So that, that, that's the type of character he is. Yeah, I think he, he definitely went late. It was very late in the season that he missed the, his first game, certainly. I think there was I think him and Steve Tyra, I think, were, were sort of ever presence for a very long time uh, in the season. I mean, looking at the, the players that have departed, you know, obviously, I guess, is Jaden Hatton, was that a bit of a surprise that, that he departed? I, I presume you would have wanted to have kept him. Yeah, the, the, the conversation we had with Jaden, which was probably five or six weeks ago, is we, we sat down with with him like we did with everyone in the squad. And, and and he told us that he was looking to get a full-time deal, Super League deal somewhere else. So that was the way the conversation we had. We clearly want, you know, wanted to keep him, but he the way that he told us he was looking for a full-time deal. So, and, and fair play to him. I think that's, in my experience, when they've got that in their head that they want to be full-time and in that environment, it's hard to change it. And, and rightly so, because if you've got ambition, that's that's what you want to do. So yeah, we wanted to keep him, but his his <clears throat> his ambition at the time lay elsewhere. So we can't do much about that. And I guess that was the same with with Daniel Hill. I suppose it's a no brainer for for him if if a full you know especially if Saint Helens come along and offer you a full time deal. I suppose there's not really much witness can do about that. No, and 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 I think what the club has done, in particular with Hilly, they've you know that. They, they know that the, the picture for him is different at a different club full-time. He's a young kid. He needs to be in full-time environment. He clearly is second choice to Jack at the moment. And we don't have the, the you know, the, the option for him to play games elsewhere. So in terms of it being a difficult decision, it was the right one that the club made and, and to allow him to, you know, <clears throat> to go and, and fulfil that in a full-time club because I think everyone at this club knows he's going to be some player at some point. And, and he needs to be in an environment where he can train full-time and reach that potential. 
And I suppose the conversation might go with St. Helens that you, you might be able to loan him back at some point if you ever needed, or I mean, not just him, but, but other players, which I guess the loan market will open up a bit more next season because of the, the COVID relaxation. Yeah, and, and that's that's what you hope as a club as well, which I think our history tells us that the, the club, particularly the youth level at this club, has, has done the best by their players. So <clears throat> most players that have left the club, younger ones always say, you know, good things about the way Phil and Ryan and, and what the club have done for them because that, at the end of the day, they do have their best interests at heart, which is doesn't always help the witness Vikings, but it certainly helps the individuals, which is important. And like you say, the, the loan market should open up a, a bit better next year. Time will tell. I mean, how early do you? Um, I mean, well, how early do you start getting back for pre-season when when you're looking? When uh, we'll be back in the end of October, right? So, so and know. then how how soon after that do you start discussion about goals and stuff for next season? I mean, I, I presume obviously it partly depends on what they're going to do with the restructuring. I guess if they say you've got to finish in the top six to get in to keep in the championship, that's ultimately what you've got to aim for. Oh yeah, well, I mean. In terms of what we speak to the players and myself included, we know that we've got to make the playoffs next year, regardless of the the structure. <clears throat> this club needs to be in the playoffs. Simple as that. So, how long we'll know until the structure comes in place <clears throat> is irrelevant to me in a way because I know anything that we don't make the playoffs, we we haven't done a good job. Particularly with the way we put the squad together for next year, we need to be in the playoffs. And and just. Just looking at the the players or the way you identify players, how do you go back? Like a Deck Gregory, for instance, was one that sort of I know I know a few signings get rumoured and, and stuff like that, but he was one who came out a bit of left field. But he certainly had a very good game for Oldham at Oldham this season. Is that is that a, a good way of identifying players that for you, or is it does it go a bit wider than that? Oh, that helps, but then you know. People that are on our radar, they are anyway. You know, so we know we, we had a pretty clear picture of who we wanted to bring in early on in the season. You know, sometimes it changes by different circumstance and and, and different things like that. But we, we had a pretty clear picture of who we were trying to bring in very early on. You know, and then we, like I say, we haven't missed too many that we were going for. And were you surprised that Paul Clough decided to to hang up his boots? Because he seemed to be, the longer the season went on, he seemed to be, uh, you know, making more and more progress, doing more and more minutes. Or did he know that he was on the home stretch sort of thing? I, he told me uh, probably five or six weeks ago. So I, I had an idea. But yeah, it's, it's, he's, he's got a good, you know, his, his life off the field's really well, you know, his, his business and things like that. So <clears throat> it's hard to tell with players because some want to play forever. Some some realise that, you know, the, another pre-season, another, you know, games on a Sunday is too much for them. It's when they come to that decision, it's it's different for everyone, you know, because he, he was still playing well. He could still he could still do a job, but mentally you don't know if he's thinking, I can't, I, you know, I don't want to come back in October. I can't go through all that again. You know, I'd rather get home five o'clock every night and sit on the couch. It's... Everyone's different, but yeah, he, he looked like he could play on. But yeah, like I'm saying, I, I don't know what's going through his head when he gets home at night. Yeah, uh, and so I guess what's the message to, to the fans ahead of ahead of 2022? It's exciting, you know. It's it, it, and and I'm sure when I say it's exciting, people will think back and well, it wasn't so exciting this year. But you look at the players that we've we've retained, who I think are good players. You know, we've got a good squad anyway, and then the players that we brought in. Me as a coach, I'm excited about getting them back in the preseason. I look at the names and and potentially what we could do. And as a fan, I think the same. I don't think any signing that we've made, you know, I I, I would, me personally, I think they they're all going to add to the group. So, as a fan, I'd be looking at that thinking, well, yeah, you know, the season ended a bit better than it started. There was some positive things, and and we're going to obviously clearly add to our squad. So, you know, it's looks like they're good times ahead. But you know, we got to perform as well, which we will. So thanks to Simon Finnegan for his time for that interview. Thanks, as always, to our sponsors, PD Law Solicitors, Arnold Gorse, Financial Management, Parklands FC and Whistle. Well, we'll try and get uh, a reg- back to some sort of regularity over the off-season. Got Danny Craven and Patrick Arvan lined up for podcasts in the coming weeks. 
Um, please do leave a review or drop me a comment or anything you want to see. Actually, drop me a tweet at JDG Sport or comment on the forum or on wherever you listen to this podcast and I'll see what I can do over the season. But from me for now, that's that's all.